I love electric vehicles, but there are facts about them that need to be discussed and addressed. To get broader adoptions of EVs, we need to do a better job of preventing and extinguishing fires like this. Oh no, that's a gas car. That's a gas pickup truck and it caught their house on fire. Anyway, I'm working on a separate video addressing the frequency of EV fires. There's been questionable information thrown around online pointing in all different directions. So hit that like and subscribe button if you want to see that. Whether by collision or manufacturing defect, lithium ion batteries can catch on fires. Most of the headlines concern battery electric vehicles because they have the largest batteries. But it's also a concern for firefighters dealing with plug-in hybrids and hybrid vehicles. They have smaller batteries, but it's often more difficult for them to identify. The problem with lithium ion batteries is that their chemistry contains their own supply of oxygen, making them more difficult to extinguish. The most common chemistries are nickel manganese cobalt, nickel cobalt aluminum oxide, and lithium iron phosphate. Of these, LFP batteries are considered less likely to have a thermal event, i.e. catch on fire, a test procedure commonly known as the nail penetration test simulates a catastrophic event to the battery. LFP batteries can often pass this test without any problem. All that aside, let's take a look at the methods of fighting EV battery fires. Of course, this information is tended for general public and not for actual firefighters. A common school of thought for firefighters is to let it burn. If it does not pose a threat to other cars or structures, let it burn down, then cool what is left with copious amounts of water. In a lithium ion battery fire, the battery is the fuel. You can't remove it from the EV. It makes its own oxygen. You can't do anything about that either. What needs to be done is to remove the heat, cooling it down. In general, gas powered vehicles take between 500 and 1,000 gallons of water to extinguish. Based on reputable sources, it takes about eight times that amount to extinguish a battery EV fire. Now, I'm sure you'll dispute those numbers having heard on social media that it takes like 50 times more. You may recall that a Tesla Semi caught fire in the mountains, and it did take 50,000 gallons of water to put it out, though its battery is roughly 10 times larger than a Model Y. In testing by the National Fire Protection Association, they actually saw smaller numbers than that. NFPA are the experts in the U.S. Their simulated testing did not include a full vehicle with flammable plastics and other materials. Plus, the lithium-ion battery was more accessible than it probably would be in a real EV. In summary, letting it burn is not ideal in most situations. So let's take a look at some tools to help. You may have seen videos like this where a vehicle starts to smoke and a fire blanket is used to cover it. If you just glance at the video, it appears like the problem is solved, but it's not. Remember, lithium ion batteries have their own oxygen supply, so starving the battery of air does not stop the battery fire. So what are the benefits? You know, fire blankets are described as isolating, encapsulating, or limiting the vehicle fire. And that's a great first step. To use it requires two people to unfold the blanket, drag it over the EV fire, and then tuck the sides underneath. Couple things to note, the people dragging the blanket should have their own oxygen supply. Burning lithium ion battery smoke is bad to breathe, yes, but so are all the plastics in the vehicle that have also started to burn. Blankets intended to be used by non-firefighters should have a disposable respirator included in the kit. Tucking the blanket under the vehicle helps to starve the secondary materials from burning. They need oxygen. Fire blankets can be used for combustion engine vehicles as well, hybrids and plug-in hybrids. They're particularly useful to keep the fire from spreading to neighboring vehicles until water can be introduced to cool down the fire. I spoke with Bridge Hill recently at a conference. They make premium fire blankets. However, industry specs for the space are still being developed. DIN spec 91489 is being finalized to address this specific use case. Some blankets are designed for a single use. More expensive blankets can be reused and they're heavier. 
Reusing a blanket is also something that needs to be specified. The blanket can absorb toxins in the smoke, so it needs to be cleaned off. How to treat the runoff water and repack it appropriately needs to be defined by the industry. Fire blankets are a useful tool. Tests have shown that they can lower the temperature of the vehicle underneath, but they are most effective when used in combination with other tools. Getting water directly to the battery is difficult unless you have a turtle. A simple but effective tool, it concentrates water on the underside of the EV where the battery is. Best of all, their, their logo's freaking great. There are some other examples of wands that can also get water underneath the EV and onto the battery. This helps to reduce the need for copious amounts of water. I like that word. Without one of these, firefighters will have a difficult time spraying water from a hose to get at the battery located on the underside of the EV. And again, they may not know right away that the vehicle has a lithium ion battery, particularly for hybrids and plug-in hybrids. The high voltage battery is smaller and can be located in different areas. Auto manufacturers are helping with training to identify vehicles with high voltage batteries, where the battery is located and how to disable it from the vehicle. The NFPA website has these documents. I, I will note that Tesla's documentation is not up to date. I guess, you know, Elon's too busy with other things. If you really want to defeat an EV battery fire, you may want to go medieval on it. Rosenbauer is a leader in firefighting technology. They have developed their best battery extinguishing system technology. Rather than spray water on the outside of the battery, it pierces the battery to flood the pack with water. Now, you only want to do this if you have confirmed that the battery is causing the fire using a thermal camera, which has become a common tool with fire departments or looking for other telltale signs. Once confirmed, you hook the unit to the control box, water is supplied from the engine, and as you can see from the size of the fire hose, it requires much less water than other method. The piercing action is powered by an air cylinder. It's a clever design. It uses an SCBA air tank to operate the piercing tool. That's what they use for breathing, so it's something they already have on board their trucks. Slide it under the EV with a pike pole, pierce and flood the battery pack to bring down the temperature. This allows firefighters to stand back, put out fires in materials surrounding the pack, and let it do its thing. Less water is required, about as much as with a combustion engine vehicle. Hybrids, plug-in hybrid battery packs may be more difficult to locate. Taller EVs may require the operator to position the unit on top of something, and cars low to the ground may need to be jacked up on one side. With all of these tools, further testing and real-world use is needed to see how effective they are and to improve their designs. Gas-powered vehicles have been common for way over 100 years, and they still catch on fire today, requiring brave men and women to save the day. The equipment and techniques they use have also improved over that time. Battery EVs, plug-in hybrids, and regular hybrids are, by comparison, very new. Manufacturers are learning how to design them to prevent fires, and new equipment and training is needed to put them out when they do happen. I hope you found this information informative, and I know you like turtles, so how about giving this a like, and thanks for sticking around till the end.